the moment I finish shooting and it immediately syncs over to his space. So we have 14 terabytes of SSDs in there and that's where we're storing all the projects that we're currently working on. Look at this scrub, it's 6K. For the last five years, every single piece of footage that I've shot, oh, right in here, it's hard drives. And it's literally, literally everything I've ever shot. My earliest 1080p footage to 4K, then 6K, then 8K, everything is on this Synology 40 terabyte eight bay NAS. But after five years, it's starting to get full. And I also made a lot of mistakes with this guy. So today we're upgrading to this guy. These two guys. Oh, and we're making what I believe is the world's greatest storage system for content creators, videographers, just greatest of all time. Fight me, you'll see. And while we're talking about massive amounts of data, did you see that this happened? Yeah, these are passwords from Twitter, Dropbox, Adobe, even some government passwords. This is why you have a password manager like NordPass. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Harris, what are they gonna do with my Adobe password? Use my Photoshop subscription? Hey you, come here. I bet you use that same password for other things too, don't you? Like maybe your banking account? So look, using a password manager not only makes all your passwords more secure because they're all different, it also means you never forget a password ever again. Also, tools like Autofill make signing in super quick and easy, and your passwords will sync across all your devices. Look, password managers are the new deadbolt on your front door. With how much of your vital information is stored online, password managers just aren't really optional anymore. Just ask my IT friend Nick here. This is a real DM from about a month ago. So look, try out NordPass right now at nordpass.com slash senpai. And you know what? If for some reason you don't like it, that link will get you a 30 day money back guarantee. So link is in the description down below. Sign up today. All right, here's a unit and it is a unit. So we got eight bays here. So we can put eight drives in here. And eventually this will have two SSDs in bay one and two, and then four hard drives across bay five through eight. But on the back, we got power going into here and you got four LAN ports, but we're gonna add a 10 gig LAN port that we got right in here. So let's put that in real quick. All right, so this card's gonna go right here. Let's pull this out. All right, this card's super dope. It's gonna fit in right here. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us a 10 gig networking jack, as well as two M.2 ports right here. So in the future, if we felt like we wanted to add in some caching drives for super fast read and writes, if for some reason this wasn't already doing the trick, that's where you do it. We don't need that right now though. All right, let's close this thing back up. Start putting in the drives. All right, let's make some room. And here is old faithful. So we're just gonna be transferring everything that's on these eight drives onto these three larger drives and putting those back in here. So in order to do that, we're taking all of these drives, putting them in here, putting these drives back in here, and then transferring the data from here to here. And then this one's good to go. Ten terabyte drives are transferred. Let's get the 22 terabytes in the old one. We just consolidated eight drives down into three, and now we're just putting empty ones back in here. There's so much room to expand now if I need to. By the way, this shot is a perfect example of why we're doing this. We have over 42 minutes of footage during this, just this segment from three different cameras all shooting 6K. This one's shooting 6K raw. This would be a nightmare over Google Drive. All right, let's get that footage transferred. All right, cool, the new NAS recognized the old drives, even the enclosure the old drives were in, and then it's telling us the new ones, we can just migrate it, keep my data, most of my settings, yeah. Okay, both NASs are set up. It's time to drag about 30 terabytes of stuff from one to the other. See if it likes this. I mean, it should be going over 10 gig. So I might have to leave this all night. And we are officially below the 24 hours left mark. This migration has been going for over 15 hours. And it's been going from this drive right here all the way over to Dustin's drive right here. And that has the three new 22 terabyte drives 
uh, arranged in RAID 5, which is probably why it's taking a while. RAID 5 has a lot of advantages, mostly being you're able to get most of the data out of your drives, but you still get redundancy. But the problem is the write speeds are really slow. That's not a problem because those are just gonna be super long-term storage. Once we're done on the regular NAS, we just dump those large files onto there and then it can write all night and it doesn't matter. But for now, with this really large migration, <laughs> I think because of that, this is gonna end up being about a 40 hour migration. So, I'll see you tomorrow. There's a part of me that died inside knowing that the most boring part of this video, the whole file transferring part, the part that I'm gonna skip over, took like four days. You don't care. <laughs> ah. The NAS is all hooked up, it's all set up, and even though it's all the way across the studio, three rooms over, check out how fast this is. When I drag this onto the SSD, ready? That was four or five seconds for a four gig file across the entire house. The craziest thing is that like 10 years from now, we're gonna look back and laugh at these speeds. But for now, that's unreal. But you wanna see the real speeds of this thing right here. Take a look at how fast I can scrub through this. These files aren't on my MacBook here. They're a hundred feet away on a 14 terabyte SSD in my NAS. Now I just need to bring Dustin his. If he tips his delivery boy. So one of these puppies, is gonna be living at Dustin's house. And that's part of the magic of this whole thing. The magic of this setup is fourfold, by the way. I'm solving four major problems that make my life so much easier. And I have to, by the way, I have to give a huge thank you to Synology for sending out two of these enclosures, four SSDs, and two of their 10 gig networking cards. So thank you for making my magical dreams come true. Let's talk about the magic of this thing, now that we're at a red light. Magical thing number one, and the reason we're dropping this one off at Dustin's place, is automatic syncing between two locations. Dustin lives 30 minutes away, and when I finish shooting, which is sometimes over 100 gigs of footage, when he goes to start editing, the first thing he has to do is download all that footage, and that can sometimes take up to hours before he can even get started. With this setup, the moment I finish shooting, I throw it on my NAS, which is identical to Dustin's NAS, and it immediately syncs over to his space. So when he's ready to go, the footage is already at his house. I just have to say that even though I'm an editor, I've never actually built a NAS or like use a NAS. I've always edited straight off of just like drives. So. You should show all the SSDs that are on your desk. You guys want to- I want you to get rid of those. <laughs> I, I want do, them to be gone. I, I do too. This is totally real too. I'm not, we didn't like throw them on here to like play it up or anything. Here's the, the battle station. You could say, these are all my drives. Oh, and if you're curious, this is the area where I play games and stream. There's the computer and there's Synology. Now that you're connected to it, the first thing we have to test is editing directly off of it. Let's make sure, let's make sure it's fast enough. Let's throw a project on the NAS here and try editing off of it. I'm just still enjoying just how slender just, men do. <laughs> hold on, let me turn this around. That's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so close to this lens right now. Well, if I like, how do I make it even weirder? If I go like, here, there we go. Uh, <laughs> Perfect time to tell you. Exciting thing, magical thing, number two that's going on over here. Cause you saw all the SSDs on Dustin's desk, but both of our NASs, hey, hey bud, how are you doing? You wanna be a part of this too? Two of the drives in Dustin's NAS and mine actually, cause they're identical, but two of the drives in there are SSDs, seven terabyte SSDs. So we have 14 terabytes of SSDs in there and that's where we're storing all the projects that we're currently working on. And because SSDs are so fast, we can edit directly off of them. And so we don't have to keep any video files on our internal storage or on external little bajillion SSDs lying around. But we're gonna see if it's fast enough to edit 6K footage. How's it feel? Apple Vision Pro. It feels it's, like I'm on an SSD, basically, Lo yeah, locally too. Pro. I see no difference so far. Look at this scrub, it's 6K. All right, testing the actual rewrite speeds on this thing. Look at that. <laughs> those are some, those are some speedy speeds. Just know it, it means fast. It's, yeah, those numbers mean fast. That office is gonna have great. 
I think I've like lived on this guy's YouTube channel for the last week now. Space Rex, anything you need to know about NASA's, I'll, I'll link to his channel down below. I owe him everything on this video. <laughs> I've got Dustin on the call here and I've got a four gigabyte file that I'm gonna throw on our syncing NAS right now on the editing drive. This is what I do at the end of every video session. I just take my footage and I dump it right in the editing folder. And so once it syncs to my NAS and then syncs to his NAS, he's just ready to edit with it. So you ready to dump it? I'm ready. This is real time. Going in now. It took four seconds. I just to heard it. write to the drive, to write to my <laughs> drive. Let's see how long how long it takes to write to yours. It says it's sixty percent. Okay. Oh wait, it has a check mark. It oh, says up to date. I see it. It did it in fifty eight seconds. Wow. This is what we like to call quality of life. <laughs> just just unnecessary hurdles are just gone. Yeah, that's a good way to put Harris it. Harris is happy. Harris is happy. So five big tips for any of you content creators or for any of you for any of you starting your content creation journey and you're running out of space you want to build something like this i have now built three nasas here are five things that i have learned for perfect storage tip number one if you can have two separate volumes for speed and for long-term storage. With my first NAS, I put eight of the same drive in there. I used something called RAID 10, if you know, you know. It ended up giving me a medium speeds and medium volumes. It ended up not being really great for anything. And so it was just a giant external hard drive that I dumped onto. This new setup is so much more functional because we put two SSDs in there in RAID 0 to edit directly off of, and then four mechanical hard drives in RAID 5 for really large amounts of storage and some redundancy. Which by the way, that is also my third magic thing of the four magic things I mentioned earlier. That's That's been a game changer for us with this machine. Tip number two, editing directly off an ass is not only doable, but it's a very good solution and sometimes even cheaper than upping the storage of the device itself. That is a more true statement for Mac users. If you've ever tried to up your storage in your MacBook Pro, you know what I'm talking about. But I mean, you can get two of those Samsung one terabyte drives for 75 bucks each and put them in RAID zero That'll give you two terabytes of insanely fast storage in there. Think you can get two terabytes of Apple storage for 150 bucks? Yes. <laughs> It's, it's 600 I just checked earlier today. Tip number three, don't fill up all your bays in the beginning. Leave some room to grow. Once my old NAS filled up, there was, there was very little I could do. So this time, if you notice, there are still two empty bays in our matching NASs. And the old NAS now has five of the bays completely empty. I can keep slapping hard drives in there. I don't think I'll ever fill up those hard drives. And by the way, that was my last of the four magic tips. I know this is confusing. I got like five tips and four magic points, but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, tip number four. <laughs> tip number four. If you have a remote editor, having some kind of syncing file system like this is an absolute game changer. This saves us two to three hours on every single video. And not only is it great for like when I finish a video and I dump a hundred gigs over to him, but even like the in-between stuff, if he texts me, he's like, hey, you forgot this shot, I can go and I can shoot stuff while he's editing, throw it on there and it's immediately on his system. There isn't him going back and forth between Google Drive five times while he's editing. It's just, it's just there. In fact, I just sent this text over to him earlier, like. 10 minutes ago about th about this shot. He's editing the video while I'm shooting this and it's just gonna show up on his system in a couple minutes. And lastly, tip number five, which I haven't mentioned in this video yet, but is also a game changer for us. Use NAS tools to automate your backups. The way our NASs work is that we have that editing drive that automatically syncs with each other, but then those drives also both sync over to the mechanical hard drives for redundancy. So each project is in two places on our drives and then that also syncs with my old NAS just in case something goes wrong with these ones. I don't have to do any of that. File management is just done for me. If I upload footage or he edits something, that video is on both of our drives in two places and another drive. I used to have to do all that manually with every single video and I didn't do a very good job. So I know this is like a video on storage and like self-awareness moment, I know that's not sexy, but this has been a mind-blowing experience for me. And I hope that I conveyed that information that is literally changing my day-to-day -day life with the amount of excitement to you as I've been feeling it myself. This project has literally added hours of freedom to my day every day. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you're gonna use any of this stuff. Let me know if there's something I missed. If there's not, just leave an emoji in the comments down below for engagement. 
because you know it helps out thank you also while you're down there hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this i love you guys i'll see you next time and as always happy streaming